I'm going to show you a spectacular game from early on in Ding Liren's career. This is from the Aeroflot Open 2011. And Ding was just 18 years old, but he's made rapid strides in the past couple of years since winning that Chinese championship in 2009. So you can see his rating here is 26-28. And this game features an opening that Ding played a great deal early on in his chess career. The King's Indian Defence, or perhaps I should say the Ding's Indian Defence. And it really suited his style at that time. You know, he was such a daring, attacking player, uh, prepared to make sacrifices for positional compensation, but also to go for checkmating attacks, as we're going to see in this game. So this is one of the main lines of the King's Indian. This is the so-called Mardel Plata variation. So we have this typical locked pawn structure in the middle of the board. And usually that means that white tries to attack down the queen side and black will attack down the king side. So already there's a lot of tension in the position. So knight e8, you can play knight d7 as well, but knight e8, and this has a particular idea in mind. Well, obviously it frees the f-pawn, so black's kingside attack is starting. But Ding plays in a slightly unusual way, c5. So, I mean, there are lots of ways you can do this with black. You, you can take on e4 here, actually, uh, but also you could just press on on the king side but Ding decides to just block things up with c5 so obviously this prevents white from playing c5 but there is a drawback of course in that white can very easily open the b-file and that's what happened so rook b1 and now Ding gets on with his kingside play and f4 so black's plan is very clear. Black wants to play g5 and g4 and crack open the g-file. And yes, white's king is at the end of the g-file. But in the meantime, white advances on the queen side and opens a file straight away. This is why, personally, I'm not too keen on this idea of playing c5. Because white is able to open the b-file and get counterplay there quite quickly. But it's a question of taste, and as we're going to see, uh, this is a really double-edged position. So queen a4, white is the first to make inroads into the position. g5, so black already wants to open things, but the knight drops back to f2. So now we can see bishop, knight, and pawn control the g4 square. And therefore h5, black needs a bit more uh, protection in order to play g4. And this again is one of those positions where it's very hard to assess what the best strategy is for, for both players actually. Um, so a big question here is should white play h3 to try and stop g4 or should white just press on on the queen side with knight b5 and potentially bishop a5. In this case, I'm sure that white would, uh, black would play a5 to, to stop things. But okay, that's just another way of playing. It's very hard to judge which move is correct. You know, these small little decisions actually have a massive effect on the game. Anyway, Ding's opponent, uh, I haven't mentioned his name actually, Krikor Mekhitaryan. Uh, he's actually from Brazil. I know it's a very it's an Armenian name, but he's a Brazilian grandmaster. So Mekhitaryan played h3 to stop g4. And Ding plays in the typical King's Indian way, rook f7, and then bishop f8. So the bishop drops back, there's a little shuffle, and the rook is going to come to the g-file just to give that g4 advance a bit more power. So this is absolutely typical. And that bishop also protects that weak pawn on d6. In the meantime, white 
is building up very nicely on the queen side. And if that rook gets down there, um, well, white is breaking through straight away. So here you've got to be courageous. So Ding threw the G pawn down the board. And here, well, how do you play with black? Should you play rook g7 straight away to collect the pawn on g4? But then that allows rook b8. That doesn't look too attractive from black's viewpoint. This would worry me a great deal. For example, here, queen b3 fall away, queen b8, and it feels as though white is making inroads there. So that's why Ding was keen to stop rook b8 and actually played bishop d7. So you can see black controls here. Tacking the queen, queen a6. I suppose the problem with this, of course, is that well, while rook b8 has been ruled out, that white might be able to use the b7 square. But anyway, let's see. Rook g7, so Ding hurries to collect that pawn and then he can open up the g file. Uh, but, you know, in playing like this, you need to be absolutely aware of the tactics. So, for example, queen takes d6, which would destroy black's position, but actually that's a mistake because knight c6 traps the queen. So, in the King's Indian, you have to be really aware of the tactics. And the strategy as well. So, you know, Ding appreciated that allowing the rook to b8 uh, would not be good. So he had to go in for this, or felt he had to. Knight b5. So white is making inroads. So d6 is attacked. So it also makes way for the bishop as well. So knight c8 that defends. And this is an absolutely crucial position. And Mkhitaryan plays a move which looks so natural, but in fact it's a mistake. The best move here is to play knight c7. I wouldn't say this is a particularly obvious move. Attacking the rook. The rook is trapped, so queen takes knight. And then bishop a5. And the queen is in trouble, therefore knight b6. Now that gets taken. Remember there's a pin here. And now black has to put the queen back here. Unfortunately, there's black can't really avoid this because if queen b8, then bishop takes c5, and that looks nasty. So queen c8, white exchanges queens. Now, actually taking the pawn on a7 is a bit risky. So with the queen exchange, white's queen, white, excuse me, white's king is obviously a lot safer. A lot of peace exchanges, but you can see with control of the open file, this must be better for white. So knight c7 was the best move, but this is said with hindsight. Bishop a5 just looks incredibly dangerous and I'm not surprised that uh, Mkhitaryan went in for this. If queen e7, knight c7 wins the rook. Therefore, knight b6 played by Ding. And this looks precarious because white takes on a7. And this looks dreadful for black, absolutely dreadful. No wonder Mkhitaryan wanted to go in for this. But Ding took on g4. So he's given up a piece, and this one is in trouble as well. But watch what happens. Queen g5. I mean, this is a very crude attack, but it's very effective. Uh, the knight obviously can't move because the queen takes g2 mate. So bishop takes b6, and bishop takes g4. And suddenly the game has turned completely. Black is a piece down. But this attack is incredibly strong.
So watch out for, for this move f3. This often comes into the game to, to break up white's king position. So bishop f1 looks plausible to defend the pawn, but now bishop e2, threatening simply to exchange and then checkmate. So rook b2, so that's an indirect defense of the pawn on g2, and f3. So now it's looking pretty uncomfortable. Watch out for a check here, and then rook h7, for example. Uh, but there are there are other ways for, for black to make inroads as well, but that's that's the main threat. So the queen dropped back, covering here. Still not absolutely obvious how black is going to make the breakthrough here, but black is actually winning. Rook b8 from Ding. And this is a very nice move. Um, here, Mekhitaryan played knight b5, but let's just have a look at what happens on knight c6. In this case, rook takes bishop, so this was the idea of rook b8. And now, rook f7. It's a beautiful move. So what's the idea behind this one? Well, actually, apart from... I mean, this, this move, f2, might come into the game, might... But actually, here's the idea. Rook b7. So this doesn't actually work at the moment because the king steps up and the queen can sort of put up a defense. But here's the point. Bishop takes f1. The rook is covering the pawn on f3, preventing queen takes f3. And with the bishop on f1 gone, then the queen can play queen takes g2. So that was the idea of rook f7. This is really clever and well spotted by Ding with this idea of, of deflecting the rook away from the defense on the second rank. So rook b8 just played. Mekhitaryan played knight b5. Rook takes bishop. Ding has recovered his piece, uh, but there's, there's more to this move. Than, than just material considerations. Um, let's see. Queen c3, so the queen is trying to come back to defend. Now, I'm going to give you time to uh, consider how black should play in this position. So there's certainly more than one way to win here, but how did Ding do it? What's the, the cleanest way to finish white off in this position? So you have a good think. I'll have a nice drink. Black to play and win. Are you ready? Ding played rook b b7. This is really nice. So this aims to just bring the rook over somewhere on the king side. Queen d2 was played, and now a spectacular finish, not too difficult. Queen takes pawn check, and here white resigned, because if the queen is taken, then there's a lovely checkmate at the side. A good old lawnmower checkmate, or a laser beam checkmate, or a double barrel shotgun checkmate, however you want to call it. Beautiful stuff. Fantastic game by Ding. You know, he's he's his attacking instinct is so sharp. And a very typical King's Indian defense where the game can turn on one move and it's really not obvious why things have turned. But Ding understood this position really, really well. Um, this was a critical moment. And Bishop a5 looks such a natural move. It looks so strong. But in fact, the correct move was knight c7. Absolutely typical King's Indian defence. As I said, this opening, the King's Indian, was Ding's speciality in those years. And he, he scored some, some wonderful victories with it. Uh, do check out the other Ding videos. And I'm also posting old 
uh, videos that are recorded of his games on the community tab. If you go to the channel main page and click on community, there's uh, a, a video posted every day with uh, an old video featuring Ding's play. So I hope you're enjoying this Ding Fest, a celebration of all things to do with Ding Niren. Thanks for watching.